Hello and welcome to Paws channel. Our video today is about dogs attacking people. First let us make it clear that all dog attacks aren't serious. It's estimated that 81% of dog bite injuries don't require medical care. In the vast majority of cases, dog bites cause only minor injuries or no injuries at all. Dog bite facts also show that most of the injuries are so small that there's no need for medical attention. We should also know that there's a difference between a dog bite and dog nip. Some dogs will only nip to warn you and some will bite to hurt you. There are multiple types of aggression in dogs that can lead to dog attacking another dog or human. First one is territorial aggression, it occurs when dogs become highly aroused in response to the presence of strangers or dogs approaching their property. Next comes possessive aggression, it is the term used to describe threatening behavior such as staring, standing over, showing of teeth, low to rising growling, snarling, snapping or biting, when it is associated with toys or other items in the dog's possession. It can also be referred to as resource guarding. Next comes protective aggression. In this type of aggression the dog protects members of its pack against another animal or a person. Mother dogs are also extremely protective of their puppies, and may become hostile toward anyone who goes near them. Next comes pain-related or irritable aggression. Aggression directed toward a person or animal, which is motivated by pain or discomfort. Next comes predatory aggression. This aggression occurs when a dog hunts something. Typically, this involves them chasing after a cat or other smaller pet. This type of aggression is not driven by hormones and is instead largely genetic. If you see dogs chasing bikes or motorbikes, that is also due to predatory aggression. Next comes redirected aggression. Redirected aggression occurs when a dog is aroused by or displays aggression toward a person or animal, and someone else interferes. The dog redirects its aggression from the source that triggered it to the person or animal who has interfered. This is why people are often bitten when they try to break up dog fights. Next comes conflict-related aggression. Conflict aggression, also called dominance aggression, can be a scary and difficult behavior for dog owners to manage. Puppies exhibit this aggression when testing limits and establishing dominance ranking within the family. They naturally strike out to see who is in charge of food, treats, territory, or toys. Next comes disease-related aggression. Aggression directed toward a person or animal may be associated with infectious or non-infectious disease. Next comes fear-related aggression. Fear aggression is characterized by rapid nips or bites because a fearful dog is motivated to bite and then run away. Sometimes the aggression doesn't begin with clear threats. A fearful dog might not show her teeth or growl to warn the victim off. If approached by an unleashed dog, stay as calm as you can. Use a firm voice. This isn't to assert dominance, but to maintain as much control of yourself and the situation as possible, and to make any commands or cues you give the dog as understandable as possible. Stand or stay upright. Stay quiet and don't scream. Get on top of something if you can. Feed something to the dog by throwing the food away from yourself if you have any. Back into a corner or against a wall so dog cannot get behind you. If a dog attacks you then, keep your hands and arms in front of your body to protect them. If the dog grabs hold of your hand and isn't letting go, move your arm more into the dog's mouth, rather than trying to pull it out. This will prevent more damage to you through tearing. Keep the dog from shaking its head or your body if they do not release. 
Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like, comment and share.